So today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a neat little trick that will allow you to solve questions like this. Basically, the question is asking us to keep taking square roots indefinitely. But we don't really have time for that in this video, so we're going to try a much shorter method. But first, let's get a feel for the problem. Usually, when you get something like this that appears to go on forever, there's a good chance that as you keep taking more and more square roots, you would approach a certain value. If you wanted to, you could try and get a feel for a rough value that this is going to approach. So we could try it just a few times, and you could maybe guess that this is approaching 1, but there's no way to verify that just by using this method. Instead, we're going to call the answer to this thing x. The trick here is when you realise that this part of the infinite thing is exactly the same as this. They both go on to infinity, so they are both exactly the same thing. Sort of like how infinity plus 1 is still infinity, in a very informal kind of way. So you can replace this whole thing with x, which gives us the following equation. So we've now gotten rid of the infinite square roots, and we just have a simple equation to solve for x. We can square both sides to get rid of the square root. Now it's important to bear in mind that whenever you square both sides of an equation, you're actually creating another solution for x. We've raised the degree of the polynomial, so we now have a quadratic equation which has to have two solutions. But we know or we assume that x has only one value, so the extra root that we created by squaring both sides of the equation is not a valid solution. We're going to end up with two values of x, and we'll need to figure out which one we actually want. But before we get to that, let's actually get those two solutions. So we can bring everything over to the left hand side, and we see that this actually factorises very nicely. Just by inspection we can get x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. Just pause here and check this for yourself if you're not convinced. You could also use the quadratic formula if you want, it gets exactly the same answer. So if we look at the two possibilities now, it's either the case that x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals minus 2, or x equals 1. Only one of these is correct, but thanks to our earlier experiment, we can be pretty sure it's x equals 1. This is why it's often helpful, if you have no idea how to tackle a problem, to just explore it a little bit and get a feel for it. To be more concrete, there's no way that by taking square roots we can somehow end up with a negative number. We know this because both of our solutions, minus 2 and 1, are real numbers, and there can only be two solutions to that quadratic equation. Again, try that for yourself if you're not fully convinced. So our final answer to this weird looking question is simply x equals 1. If that's all you wanted to get out of this video then you can stop watching here. But I do have another problem that is similar to this which you could try for yourself. It looks like this. So it's essentially the same except instead of square roots it's an infinite chain of nested fractions. So pause here if you'd like to give this a try before we get into the solution. So again if we call the answer to the problem x, we see that this part is also x. So we can get the following equation. Now we can multiply both sides by 2 minus x to get rid of the denominator. And we see that if we rearrange this, we just get another quadratic equation. This one factorises again quite nicely to x minus 1 squared equals 0, which has just one solution, x equals 1. So again, the answer to the question is 1. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, then leave a like and check out one of our other videos. Thanks so much for watching.